Hello and welcome back to this session with Brother Lee Stone King. And we've already encountered some wonderful words of wisdom, and I believe that this session will be no less. Um, in this particular session, we're going to be speaking about growing beyond personal concepts of ministry. Sometimes we as younger ministers, we have an idealistic view of what the Lord's going to do for us or do with us or do through us. And the Lord does a shift. The Lord changes our focus. And sometimes we feel uneasy with that. <clears throat> and I believe that Brother Lee Stone King will have some things that will empower us and give us direction um, and prepare us for these times in our life. Brother Lee Stone King, I have noticed in my own personal ministry many times where the Lord would focus my attention from one personal ministry to the next. And during that time period, there would be some stresses, um, almost like there were new levels of authority in my ministry. And I would feel a stress in that new level of authority. Um, have you experienced something like this when the Lord would shift you from one role, one title to the next? Or? Yes, and this is a, a very vital question because it will apply to everyone that is in the ministry. For example, I've always just been a Bible believer. I just believe that these signs follow them to believe. I've always believed that. And I've witnessed to everyone, as I've said before, which helped me to evolve into the ministry. And with experiences, you learn as you walk through it, and the Holy Ghost will guide you and teach you and train you. But what Brother Dabbs is really discussing here, which is so vitally important, you must understand it is of paramount importance that you understand there are levels of authority you move from. You start out in the ministry at one level, and God will keep lifting you to other levels, higher levels of operation. For example, I've met a lot of pastors in my travels, and um, they'll make statements like, uh, you know, we've been here 10 or 12 years. It was really difficult when we came. It was so hard to get people prayed through to the Holy Ghost, but now it's very easy to get people through the Holy Ghost. And I've listened to them, and then I've said to them very kindly, no, no, it's, it's not easier. It's no more easy to get people prayed through now to the Holy Ghost than it was 10 years ago. It's just that you have been lifted to a higher level of authority and power over the spirit world in this area. That's why it's easier. And I think the transition periods between one level of operation and another can be very, very difficult because you'll say to God, God, I want you to use me. Please use me. I want to see the miraculous. Well, God answers prayer. Well, then once the transition begins and you can feel him lifting you to another level because you'll see new things, you'll feel to do new things, you'll hear new things in the spirit, and there'll be some new miracle or some, something totally different that, that's happened. Well, then it becomes scary because even though you've told Jesus you want to go there, it's scary because you don't know exactly what's going to happen when you get there, and you don't know exactly what all he may require of you in order to arrive there. You want to go, but you're not sure what's going to happen in the end result. And what has always been frustrating to me is just when you get to a level and you get comfortable in that level and you can sort of relax for a moment, so to speak, God opens a door on a level higher and you see that you could go higher and get involved with more power. Uh, then you're no longer comfortable because you want to get there. Well, then the transition begins and God begins to pull you and uh, begins to train you to go to that particular level. So I've been through a number of levels through the years, but the most difficult level I've ever had to deal with was being raised from the dead because when I got home from the hospital. They didn't want, didn't want me to travel for two months, so I stayed in my own home in January and February of 2004, right after the heart attack in November of 2003. 
And I was there by myself. And some days I would pray all day long. I would just cry and pray all day long. I laid on the floor one day all day long and just worshiped God and prayed and, and sought the Lord because I knew that there was something different about me, but I wasn't sure what it was. I was different. My personality was different. I didn't feel the same about things. I didn't view things the same way as I had viewed them before. So I went to a general conference, and um, Brother Anthony Mangan preached a marvelous message on holiness on a Friday night. And then I was on the front row with Brother and Sister Willoughby on the main floor in that general conference, and Brother Mangan motioned for me to come. And I thought he wanted me to come up and just stand there so he could use me as an example about a miracle that God had performed in, in my situation and my being raised from the dead. So I walked up there, but he handed, the, 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 he handed me the mic, and he said, tell it. And I, I said, what do you mean, tell it? I pulled the mic up. What do you mean, tell it? He said, tell it. Well, then I realized he wanted me to tell my story or something about it, and he wanted me to finish the message for him. So I just put that mic in front of my lips, and the Holy Ghost came on me, and I just began to tell what I felt about what God had done for me, probably 10 minutes. The place exploded. I, I mean, there was such a move of God. The gift of faith was there. There were angels in that place. They were, they were on every level in that particular auditorium and convention center. Well, <clears throat> when the Holy Ghost fell, people were healed. People in the audience actually came up on the platform. I'm just lost in the crowd on the platform. You, you can't even see me from the audience. But while all this is going on, the Holy Ghost impressed on me to transmit the gift of faith to this entire audience. Well, the audience was divided into four huge seating sections. One, two, three, four, with long aisles from the floor all the way up to the, to the top. So lost in the crowd, I just stood and lifted my hands, and I said, God, I transmit the gift of faith to these people. And I pre prayed like that to that first section. And then I turned it, and when I did that, there was a roar of response that came back from that section. And I knew they couldn't hear me because they didn't have a mic, and I knew they couldn't see me. And I did the same thing to the second se section. I said, Jesus, I transmit the gift of faith to these people in Jesus' name. And there was a roar that came back. That happened four times. I knew I had a hold of something. When I got home from that conference, I called Brother Barnes, and I said, Brother Barnes, something has happened to me. I've got a whole, something is different about me. And I told him exactly what I've just told you about transmitting the gift of faith to those four sections of that audience. And when I got all finished, Brother Barnes said, Brother Stone King, he said, that is resurrection power. You didn't have that before you were raised from the dead. He said, that's why people are coming to these meetings. They can feel that in you, and they're coming to expose themselves to it. He said, I've never known, I've never known of anyone that God has ever raised from the dead to continue to preach the gospel. And he said, God has raised you from the dead to preach the fivefold ministry in its fullness. He said, so boy, do it. And on his authority and his burden for me, I have just gone and done it. It is a marvelous thing to have mentors. I just want to insert this here. It's a marvelous thing to be under subjection to someone else because it makes me safe. I'm not responsible for all my actions. I'm only doing exactly what I've been told. I'm being obedient to spiritual authorities over me. It makes me in such a safe place. And I have been protected through the years because I've had spiritual mentors over me that I've done exactly what they told me to do. In fact,